Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Covenant Fellowship of Austin. I'm happy everybody's here, and uh, we're going to start by lighting the Christ candle as a reminder that Christ is always with us. Ah, there we go. If you have a candle at home, I invite you to light that as well. Working on it. Come on. All right, there we go. Would you please join me in the call to worship? It's from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not take the path that sinners tread. Our delight is, is in the law of the Lord. <laughs> when, may we be like trees planted by streams of God's living water. May our eyes bear good fruit, loving God, God and loving neighbor. Please pray with me. Lord God, with your Son you made heaven and earth. And through him, you continue to accomplish your purpose for creation. Help us live faithfully by the power of your spirit and grace. Make us witnesses to your truth and instruments of your peace. That all may come to trust in your love, which we know in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Each week we say our mission statement to remind us of who we are. So let's say our mission statement together. New Covenant, New Covenant Fellowship, a racially diverse community, community informed, informed by, by the Bible, Bible empowered by, by the Holy Spirit, and, and motivated to share God's love with all. In response to God's love, we, we are called, called to equip disciples, disciples to faithfully serve, serve to encourage seekers to joyfully commit, and, and to implore all to worship our Lord as we love our neighbors, grow in grace, grace, and live by faith. We, our hymn this morning is Kindred We Have Met to Worship. Thank you. 
betrays us and our God. Repentance redeems and restores us. Repentance redeems and restores. Let us confess our sins together. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal, Eternal God, your law commands us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Too often we prioritize our own interests above the health and welfare of others. We betray you and our best selves by living without regard for the ways our actions harm our neighbors in need and the planet entrusted to our care. Open our hearts to love. Open our minds to honestly acknowledge our role in wrongdoing. Forgive us and return us to your way of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Amen. Now, I invite you to unmute yourselves as we extend God's grace to one another and share that peace we've been given by greeting one another with the words, the peace of Christ be with you. And also oh, with you. you. Peace of Christ, everyone. Peace of Christ, everybody. Peace of Christ, everyone. 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 Christ peace. And also with you. Peace, <laughs> Rahad. Christ. Kevin Shalanda. Robert Brianna. Peace, Robert. Peace, everybody. Peace, Ellis. Peace, Ellis. Peace, peace of Christ. Peace, peace of Christ, Lucy. Hey, Kevin and Chalandra, Brianna, can we see your face? Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Kevin, Chalanda, and Brianna. Peace of Christ. 
of Christ be with each of you this day. Your head and also with I you. I see Kevin, peace of Christ. Kevin, Kevin peace of Christ with you. Peace to everybody that I'm usually <laughs> out there with. <laughs> just move it all over. Just move it all over. She's a shake and rattle of the Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mari. We are going to have a prayer of illumination. My name is Aquanetta Hicks, and um, I'm so glad to be with y'all this morning. So let's pray together. Bless us, O oh God, with ears to hear your truth, vision to discern your path, and feet ready to move into action. Open our minds and our hearts to the reading of your word and honest proclamation of your truth. Ready us to respond to the Spirit's call and together we all say, amen. Amen. I have one scripture to share with you this morning. The... Uh, folks who prepared the slides, thank you for putting the entire scripture on there. But I'm choosing this morning to read just the first part of Psalm 83, verse number one. And it reads thusly, O oh God, do not be silent. Do not remain silent, excuse me. Do not turn a deaf ear. Do not stand aloof, O oh God. God bless the words that have been read. Bless them that they will enter into our hearts, that we may do your will and glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to share with you this morning, and forgive me, I have not yet figured out how to use multiple screens while I'm on the screen. So you're going to see me look away from the camera. Please, I'm not being rude. Uh, just that I'm trying to get it all figured out. But one thing I do know is that uh, the word of the Lord has been uh, given to me, and we will share it today. And what I want to say is this, the title is When God Goes Silent. And as a lot of you uh, theologians know that as you prepare sermons, a lot of times the sermons come to you before they're delivered to God's people. And this is one of those sermons that was delivered to me and I had to live it. And so I'll just share it with you and share what the Lord uh, shared with me. So in this division of Psalms, the writer was talking about the fact that there had been a time before where he had heard God, but it seems like now God has gone silent, that he's actually turned a deaf ear to the psalmist. And with those of us who named the name of Christ, I don't need to see a show of hands to know that there's going to be some times in our Christian journey where we feel the same way, where we feel like God is not hearing us. And no matter what we do, there seems to be no response from God. As believers, it shakes us to our very core to think that God is silent or that, almost worse, God chooses not to hear us. Or even more than that, God does hear us, but chooses to be far away from us. How scary. Because not only is it that we don't hear God, but we also don't feel God's presence. So we don't, we feel like we're alone in the hurt that we feel. We feel like we're alone in the pain that we're in. And we feel like when we ask questions, there are no answers. 
as believers, this is one of the worst feelings ever. And if you are like I am, it scares you to your very core because it's as if you don't have a compass, you don't have a North Star, you don't have anything to guide you. At least that's the way you feel. And so because there's a gap in the communications, a lot of times we as humans will begin to ask ourselves questions like, so what am I supposed to do at a time like this? Is God mad at me? Uh, am I not worthy? Maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe. And then you start your laundry list of all of the things that you um, have maybe done in the past and say, well, maybe God is mad at me and God won't answer me. Now, all of those things are human. The responses are human and they're natural and they're normal. But as believers, as people of faith, what I want to suggest to you are three things. And there are three things that will help us respond when we feel like God is silent. The first one is, it, it sounds so simple, but I want to remind us again. The first one is to fall on your faith. Not fall on your feelings, fall on your faith. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Remember, they died in faith. The, the Messiah had not yet come. But they believed that the Messiah would come. They believed that God had heard their prayers. And so they were commended because of their faith. This is the time in, in human history, if not now, if uh, more so now than ever before, that we need to remember what it is we believe and in whom we believe. Because what happens is, we have a whole lot of noise going on in the world. And so it's not about how we may feel. We may feel like we're not worthy, but God says we are. We may feel like God has not heard us, but God has heard. And so it's about our faith. So that, that suggestion, that admonition, if you will, is closely tied to number two. Do not isolate yourself from other faith-filled people. And likewise, make sure that all of you all, that all of us continue to live according to God's word. It's easy to turn on a 30 minute, a 30 second soundbite and to allow ourselves to be led astray. It's a whole lot easier than anybody would ever realize. Or people say one thing and uh, you may feel like, well, nothing else is working. Let me try that. No, this is what has worked for centuries is that God's word is true. And that we are to surround ourselves by people who believe that fact to continue to prop each other up, to continue to support each other in our most holy faith, according to the word of God. So remember that uh, Ephesians 6, 10 and 18 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, 
with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flames of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So we have two instructions when we think God has gone silent. To fall on your faith, remember your faith. And don't be isolated from people that are like-minded, people who are faith-filled. Stay in your word. The word itself says that the word of God is very much like a uh, a sword. It's it, it's as as those who go into battle. It is our armor. It is what we put on to protect ourselves from the evil one. So the last thing that I want to share with you is simply this. Uh, in the Old Testament, as the children of Israel went over the Red Sea because God parted it, um, they were instructed to take stones out of the bottom of the sea and carry them with them. Those stones were to be a reminder of what God had done for them. And they were instructed to tell their children and their children's children about all that God had done, how the death angel had passed over, how they had been delivered from Egypt, how God set them up in a mighty land, a land that was already occupied, but God gave it to them. So I suggest this last thing to each one of us. Review all the times that God has brought you through. And I want to remind you, it doesn't matter how small, quote unquote, the things are. Remember what God has done for you. I remember one time, this has been years and years ago, it was a Wednesday night and it was a what we call a testimony service in another church. And a lady got up and she was just so very happy that God had finally blessed her with this rug, this area rug that she had been believing God for, for a very long time. She just didn't have the money for it. And she kept going in and looking at the rug and praying and believing God for it. And finally, one day it was so on sale that she was able to purchase her rug and she wanted to tell the saints. So some of the folks, you know, in the congregation kind of chuckle, like, you know, that's nothing. And I got in the mic and I told them, I said, you know, today's a rug. Tomorrow it could be cancer. But every time God does something for each one of us, it helps to build up our faith. So that when the big things come, when the big trials come, we can go back and say, God, I have history with you. You did this for me. You did this for me. Each one of us have our own set of testimonies that we can add to the testimonies of those uh, ancestors that we find in the pages of the Bible and what God did for them. And so Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Those are the things that you think about when you believe that God has gone silent. And always remember John 10 and 10, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Now, I did start this out by saying, when God goes silent. But this is what I believe further. God never is silent. God is constantly talking to those of us who are believers. But these three things are not to move God, they're to move us. 
They are to cause us to fine tune our spirits with the living God. God is always talking. God is constantly talking to us. But it is our responsibility to clear out the clutter. It is as if, and this is an old thing, but it is as if when we listen to radios, if we didn't fine tune those knobs, we were getting a whole lot of static and we were not able to hear the thing that we were trying to tune in on. And I believe that what God is saying is I'm not silent. I'm not silent at all, but I need you to clear out the clutter so that you can hear me. And so that, my brothers and sisters, is what I share with you. Psalm 135 and 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. God loves us. He has a plan for us. Jeremiah 29 and 11 reminds us that he has plans for us to prosper and not to harm us. So God has not gone silent, but it is our responsibility as believers to clear out the clutter so that we can hear what God says for our specific individual lives. Know that God's plan for you will prevail and remember that God is for you and not against you. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response. Friends, let us say what we believe using these words from the Bell Heart Confession. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the church as the community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another. That unity is, therefore, both a gift and an obligation for the church of Jesus Christ, that through the working of God's Spirit, it is a binding force, yet simultaneously a reality which must be earnestly pursued and sought, one which the people of God must continually be built up to attain, that this unity must become visible so that the world may believe that separation and enmity and hatred between people and groups is a sin which Christ has already conquered, and accordingly, that anything which threatens this unity must have no place in the church and must be resisted. That this unity of the people of God must be manifested and be active in a variety of ways. In that we love one another, that we experience, practice, and pursue community with one another, that we are obligated to give ourselves willingly and joyfully to be a benefit and blessing to one another, that we share one faith and have one calling, are of one soul and one mind, have one God and Father are filled with one spirit, are baptized with one baptism, eat of one bread, and drink of one cup, and confess one name, are obedient to one Lord, work for one cause, and share one hope. Together, come to know the height and breadth and depth of the love of Christ, Together are built up to the stature of Christ, to the new humanity. Together know and bear one another's burdens, therefore fulfilling the law of Christ, 
that we need one another and upbuild one another. Admonishing and comforting one another that we suffer with one another for the sake of righteousness. Pray together, together serve God in this world, and together fight against all which may threaten or hinder this unity. Every Sunday we have an opportunity to bring the gift, to bring to God a portion of that which God has given to us. Now, sometimes we do this on the Internet, and sometimes we do this by mailing in checks, but we always have the opportunity to symbolize that by passing the basket. And if you brought a gift, put it again and just pass it on. Yeah. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for all you've given us. And we ask you, please, to accept these, our gifts. Take them and to multiply them, that we might use them to build your kingdom on earth. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing the doxology. We do an acapella. Well, we have come to the time that we can all partake in what the Lord instructed us to do. And in so doing, what it does is it reminds us of what Christ did for us. And it also reminds us that we are knit together one to the other. And so that's why we do it as a body. And New Covenant does it every Sunday, which is a wonderful reminder that we are, we belong to each other and we belong to the Lord. I want to first pray over the elements. And so whoever is there on site, if you could uh, raise the bread and, and raise the, the cup and uh, we'll pray over that, then I will read the scripture, and then if uh, you all will serve each other, and those of you who are on camera, if you'll get your elements, and we will break bread together, and we will drink together. Let's pray for the elements. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this time that we set aside to remember what Christ did for us on the cross. We thank you that these elements of bread and wine or juice are representative of Christ's body that was broken, that we might be made whole, and of Christ's blood that was shed so that we would have eternal life. Bless these elements, we pray. Bless us as we partake. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to read in our hearing from 1 Corinthians. It will be 1 Corinthians 11 and 23 to 26. And it begins, I, for I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if everybody has their bread, their cracker, whatever, let's break that all together.
in the same way after supper, he took the cup and saying, this cup is the cup is the new the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes let us eat together and let us drink together come to the time in our service where we share our prayers and praises with one another. So if we can stop the Zoom recording, that way um, our prayers will remain here.